first of all, I guess I, I'm Rebecca. I'm an actress and I'm with the Valley Film Festival. I'm uh, for Tracy Adlet and we were so lucky to meet Zofie from Artini um, at the March 2 Films um, online. Um, and yeah, she's a distribution badass. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we just, we're, we're so aligned. It was funny when I met you because um, you're just, you're very community driven and this is exactly what we're looking for. So we're all here today to answer any distribution questions our independent filmmakers may have. And we're so lucky to have this resource. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Jofia, I'm head of acquisition at Artini. Uh, we are basically a relatively new company. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly introduce because as I understood you all got uh, some kind of information in advance So I'll just sum it up and then we can jump into the questions and so on uh, So basically we are trying to somehow fill the gap in the distribution system uh, as we started like a couple of years ago uh, the idea was to uh, was to provide films uh, to the audience which is uh, hard to target uh, any other way uh, meaning, uh, for example, for everyone who wants to make a screening and show uh, some type of films uh, to a community, to people who have some kind of same interest, uh, it could be even a cafe or a library, all the places which are not like regular cinema, it's not a theatrical distribution, continuous theatrical distribution per se. Uh, so for them, we, uh, we build a system uh, which should be easy for both ways, for the filmmakers, uh, which uh, they can upload the film to our web page and offer it uh, through that. And from the other side, anyone who wants to organize a screening, uh, our, our platform should make it very easy for them. Uh, they can choose the film they are interested in and they don't have to worry about anything else. They just pay for the license one time and then they organize the screening themselves. And together with it, uh, we also developed a technology because uh, many of the places or almost all of these places are not uh, capable of um, screening from DCPs. Uh, they don't have the projectors and so on. <clears throat> so we developed our own technology, how to deliver the films, how to screen them safely, securely. So the level of the security is almost the same as DCP, uh, but it's uh, through our uh, proprietary Artini uh, cinema player, uh, which makes it very easy because you can download it to your computer uh, and then for free. And then when you pay for the film, you can screen it through any kind of uh, projector uh, to any kind of screen you want. So you don't have to have any, any kind of uh, very expensive uh, solution for yourself. So that's basically it. And we are a startup. We started a uh, couple of years ago with some testing and so on. This year we were at the beginning of the year planning a big, uh, big launching uh, promotion company. But as you all know, a uh, pandemic came in. So we had to somehow a um, little bit change our business plan for, for a while. Uh, so now we are mainly working uh, within Czech Republic because it's very hard to track uh, what is happening in each country and so on. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's been a little bit harder this year, but we definitely want to go worldwide. So uh, we are talking to people from, uh, from all over the world, both filmmakers and people who would like to organize this kind of screenings. So yeah, basically that's, the, that's just the intro. Very nice. Can you tell us a little bit about the encryption process? Uh, security? Yeah, basically what we do is that we, uh, the, the film is encrypted the whole way when you, you can upload it directly to our system, then we encrypt it and it's decrypted on the fly, meaning that it's uh, never anywhere uh, decrypted on any kind of hard drive and so on. So it's, um, and the licenses work uh, the same way as with DCP, meaning that, uh, you, that if someone pays for the film, they have to pay and choose how many licenses they want to obtain. And they can unlock the film only for uh, that uh, time frame. And after that, uh, after the film is uh, played for more than 60%, uh, I mean, the file is screened for more than 60%. One license is um, 
uh, like counted down. If there are zero licenses, the film became unplayable. So uh, then it's it's uh, not possible, and it's not possible to copy it anywhere and so on. So it's it's uh, in this case very um, very similar to DCP. The the thing is that we uh, use a fast compression, uh, which uh, downsize the uh, the file uh, size, uh, so it's smaller. Uh, so only what you have to do is you have to download it in advance from uh, because before the screening, but the screening then go uh, offline, and whenever it uh, connects uh, back to Wi-Fi, it asks the system if there is uh, if there is uh, any license left uh, or not. Perfect. Um, let's see. I feel like I had another question now. I'm forgetting it since no one's jumping in. But um, um. maybe, maybe I, I can uh, say because the technology itself, we can offer it uh, also like a product itself. So it could be used, you know, for if anyone wants to send, um, we call it Artini content delivery. And if anyone wants to send some kind of uh, audiovisual material to anyone around the world. Uh, they can use it without granting us any type of rights. So they can just use it as a service, uh, which okay. is safe, secure, it's uh, fast, online, digital delivery. Uh, and they can use it for just a small amount fee. Now we are charging around $20 per one transfer. Uh, and uh, the, oh. if you decide to use it, you can upload your film there and you can just uh, decide yourself who do you want to send it, how many licenses you want to send them, and so on. So you can use it either for delivering to anyone to watch your film and don't be uh, scared of uh, getting it stolen, or yeah. you can use it even for festival screenings and so on in locations which are not equipped as uh, DCP, uh, DCP cinemas. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh, I am, I, okay, I remembered my question. So this um, platform was also so great because um, I learned about the filmmaker Q&A and I was wondering how that all works because obviously the film is downloadable and then um, uh, was the Q&A live or pre-recorded? Do you have the option for both? Uh, what type of uh, Q&A you mean? Um, um, say you wanted to do a Q&A right after the film, maybe with like the director, a few cast members mm -hmm. and um, I mean, whoever in the audience had some questions about the film that they wanted answered. Um, is that that's a possibility? Uh, well, it's a possibility. We can uh, we can connect uh, the organizers because we know uh, about all the all the screenings which are done through uh, through Artini. So, if anyone wants to, we can connect uh, the organizers directly to the filmmakers. We also did. Uh, as I say, in Czech Republic, it's it's smaller country, so we also provided uh, contact or you know invited people directly to the screening. I mean that we we asked the director that someone is organizing this type of screening and they are really interested in them joining in and so on. So uh, so we can provide it. It's not done technologically now, but uh, we can definitely uh, definitely want to do that because that's the that's the basic idea behind Artini to connect the filmmakers with the audience which is very hard for them to reach or might be um oh Sean ha had a question he says he's a filmmaker and how does he profit from the screenings and could you break down the waterfall from beginning to end mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically if you decide you want to add your film to uh, to Artini, uh, Artini catalog. You can either contact us directly or you can do everything uh, online. So you uh, register yourself, you create your own account. Uh, you can read all the terms and conditions and contracts and so on. Upload the film itself there, upload any other materials you wish to, wish to add there, like, uh, I don't know, pictures, synopsis, edit the synopsis and so on. Uh, then you can pick uh, the prices for which we are uh, selling the film later. Uh, we have some kind of recommendation price lists. Uh, we divide it um, in three categories, uh, in three categories depending on the um, country where the screening is happening 
and depending on uh, if the country of the purchasing power of the country. So let's say in um, I don't know Sweden or U.S. It's uh, it's uh, the screening is more expensive than in Nicaragua, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so you can uh, choose these prices. We recommend you some, but it's up to you. If it's a new film, might be more expensive uh, from your point of view or if it's an old documentary, but you still want to um, share it with some audience, uh, you can pick a lower price. Um, and from that price, then uh, when the screening is happening, uh, then we deduct 60%, uh, which goes to the producer and 40% uh, for us. So it's like a revenue share model. Uh, and we cover uh, all the like marketing and distribution delivery costs and so on. Also, when you are uploading the film online, you can uh, geoblock uh, the territory. So if you have rights only for, um, for US, uh, you can geoblock all the other part of the world or other way around. You can change it later, both the ter territories and the price. Um, so yeah, so basically that's, uh, that's it. And then through the dashboard, you can see how many screenings happened and so on. Uh, and for the rights, maybe that's one important thing. What type of rights are we talking about? Because we call it non-theatrical, uh, which is not very well specified in any legal, uh, any legal, uh, rules, but it's basically it's a uh, public screening rights which means that it's rights for public screening anywhere, uh, it's at any place, but it's not a uh, continuous theatrical distribution. So it's, it's covering schools, uh, could be covering schools, but also there are educational rights. It really de depends on the country because each country have a slightly different system, but it could be art galleries, museums, libraries, cafes, um, I don't know, you name it, any place. It could be outside cinema or, or, or open air, drive-in theater, etc. Drive-in. Well, so basically the rights expire after each use. Uh, well, yeah. you grant us the rights for a period of time for two years, but we can, oh, okay. uh, but we can it, it's uh, negotiable if you don't want to do it for this long and if you want to prolong it and so on. So okay. you grant us the rights and we provide these rights to anyone who wants to uh, make the screening, but they have to choose uh, for which date, uh, how many licenses, how many times will they screen it and so on. And after that, it expires. Oh, um, oh if it's an exhibition, doesn't that conflict with distribution in different countries? Or do you have relationships with local distributors um, in case the filmmakers get a limited theatrical release in theaters? Uh, well, we also, it very depends individually since this is not, it's really haven't been systemized this way of screenings. Uh, so it's, we are still negotiating, for example, in Czech Republic, we are, we, we've talked to all the distributors and so on. Uh, so. It depends. So if they have, it, it, and also it depends on what kind of um, contract do you as a filmmaker have with the distributor. If you grant them all the rights, uh, then it's their rights and we have to ask them. But if you grant them only theatrical rights, then you can grant us non-exclusively the non-theatrical. And of course it could be, uh, you know, it could be up to discussion with them as well. We are trying to be as open as possible because as we know, it's, it's really, this is something very new. So we are trying to, uh, to help the filmmakers uh, negotiating with the, with the distributors and so on. But uh, truth to be told is that um, this kind of rights are often left unused. They are often in, in the contract. They are covered in the contract with the local distributor, even though the distributor doesn't use them. They just do theatrical distribution or maybe VOD distribution but they also have this rights in the contract, but they don't use them. So that's why we are trying to talk to the producers to let them know that there is an option how to use them yourself or with us and uh, to be prepared uh, to negotiate it uh, next time, you know, when you are signing any type of contract and so on. Sounds good. Um, I, it seemed to me that even if you had a film that was released already and available for streaming online, 
but mm-hmm. since um um uh, oh my god i'm looking for the word anyways it seemed like it was still available to screen with you even though mm-hmm. we have a contract with a specific distributor um so that was one of the benefits i saw maybe if you're not um Maybe you're already streaming in the U.S., but you want to go overseas, but your distributor hasn't set you up with that kind of contract that you want to push for it. That was another um, good thing I saw with Artini. Um, yeah, exactly, that. exactly. Yeah, we are trying, because that's exactly the thing uh, where we came up with, uh, with Artini, because let's say, I don't know, you have a film about running, uh, it's a documentary, or it could be a fiction, or, you know, exactly. <laughs> and... Um, it has been, you know, in theatrical distribution in some countries, maybe even only. But there are a lot of people who might be interested in seeing that. It could be runners' communities and so on. Yeah. And, uh, they don't know about the existence of film, so that's why uh, we think that we can, we are trying to target these groups of people with uh, potential interest and offer them films which might interest, uh, interest them topic-wise. And as we speak about non-exclusive rights, we don't want to compete with anything. We just want to add another layer, you know, another way how to find your audience, um, how to let them know that there is a film which is existing and they might be interested in it, but they never heard of it or they don't know where to find it and so on. How many categories, we have one more question, but how many categories can you put your film in? How many communities? Um, I was trying to test that out. Yeah, well, it could be, it depends on the film. It could be as many as the film is covering. So we are, uh, it's because we are, this is a part of work which is uh, starting uh, manually. So uh, I mean, like in person, we are, we want to build a network of communities but it takes some time. And uh, now we are starting, or we started with really like targeting these groups and uh, connecting them with the topics. Uh, But it could be, you know, if you have a film which is about uh, running, but there is a politician running, so it could be both in political (laughs) category and in a (laughs) court community. It really really depends on the film. We don't uh, any, we don't, how to say it, uh, like, we don't put any limit on that. Oh, nice. I like to picture politicians running. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, so Sean's next question is, um, since you're taking a 40% profit margin, is there any marketing promotion you help the filmmakers with? Uh, yeah, definitely. We are trying to help. It also depends on, um, on the type of the film which is there. Uh, we also do because we also have a program for like world community premiere, which we call it, um, meaning that if there is a new film on some kind of topic and we feel that it would be really good for this type of distribution, uh, we can set up a specific uh, project uh, manager for that and really like work on it very hard. Um, otherwise, it, it, it really depends if it's uh, all the... It depends on the film, actually. That's why we, um, during the acquisition and talking with the producers and so on, because it's sometimes it could be even both ways. We can do some kind of marketing, but it's possible that uh, as the filmmaker made the film, spend some years with the topic, they can already know who might be, who might be their target. It's just hard for them to work around it, you know, to do the to do the manual work. So that's where we can help and somehow do it together. Nice. Um, oh, so could you break down the? Um, you have shorts, docs. You have fe- uh, features. You have pretty much uh, everything available. Uh, yeah, I would say so. We are now testing with the shorts. We are testing uh, how to distribute them if it's. Uh, so we are offering them in some kind of like uh, that, that there are a couple of short films like one film you know we sell it like uh, um, uh, well, I can't find the right English word but y- you okay. know what I mean like um, yeah, continue yeah. With, uh, 10 films 10 short films together um, oh anthology and, series or uh, okay. yeah some, yeah something like that and definitely documentaries uh, and fiction films. Um, 
for now, as we, we had a lot of screenings over the summer in, in Czech Republic, uh, because it, the situation was uh, better here, so the restriction fell down and so on. Yeah. Uh, and for that time, uh, we saw that there is the most interest was in like feel good films, which are you know comedies or family things and so on, because people are obviously tired of some depressive uh, topics and hard, uh, hard themes, documentaries and so on. So it was better. At that time, um, yeah. it was better for the like slightly, I, I would say, feel-good fiction films. But also, we know that for the documentaries, it's basically this is very good uh, way how to find the audience because documentary is in originally made with uh, around some topic, and uh, the filmmaker already thinks about uh, his community. audience who the, who wants who he wants to talk to. Uh, so this is a way how to help him to uh, or her to get the film out to the right people who might be interested in it. I love it. Yeah, I was going to ask what you thought would be the most popular, but obviously comedy right now is... Right now, film. yeah. It, I, maybe not even like comedy, but some lighter topics, lighter topics, I would say. Yeah. L Which is understandable topics. because we have depression all around us, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. People want to when they wanted to go out, they wanted to have fun. So that's true. Yeah. I'm excited to see which um, communities connect um, all together as this goes further and further along because it just seems like such a great way to interconnect everybody. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's what Pretty we cool. that's what we definitely would like to do. It's just the COVID situation make it uh, uh, much harder than we thought. Uh, because obviously gathering of people is not, uh, it's very complicated now. But yeah. as we saw, as we saw in the summer, uh, we, the people want to do it. Even, uh, even more when they are locked down, even more is that they afterwards, they want to uh, hang out together and do some, some things together and so on. So we believe that this could be, this could be a good way, but let's see what's, uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> gonna happen. I know so many things happening, and it seems like the world, and I mean, just every <laughs> situation right now is trying to separate us. But I feel like pretty soon we're gonna all come together even stronger. It's gonna, it's gonna be good. And oh, um, oh we have another question. Okay, so oh, the pertaining to the delivery system, how long do you typically hold films or the films file for? Um, how many films can you accommodate right now, especially if you're working with a lot of festivals? Is there enough um, server space and have you considered blockchain technology? Um, okay. Yeah, uh, well, I must say from the beginning that I am not the technical, uh, completely technical guy. We have uh, like, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 people who are the technicians and who understand it very well. But just to uh, briefly sum up, we can accommodate um, around 1,000 screenings per day right now, uh, but, it's still, but it's still growing. Um, regarding the server space, uh, I don't know much of the details, but uh, it hasn't been a problem yet at all. We own some kind of server space in Czech Republic and uh, it's possible for us whenever we need to, to uh, make it bigger. So uh, this shouldn't be a problem for us. And uh, the blockchain technology actually we already use uh, because we have a side project which is called My Title, uh, which somehow uh, came up during the process of building the technology. Because each of the screenings is, we use the blockchain technology to, um, um, to somehow make a, um, uh, make a confirmation of the screening. So each screening is saved in the blockchain and it could be used later legally in any kind of, if, if the film leaks anywhere, we can track where it did leak. And this type of uh, stamp in the blockchain is usable in court and so on. I'm really sorry for my, for my layman terms, but I'm not- uh, well, um, I feel like um, just me personally, I, I I prefer layman's terms, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I am definitely not the tech guy. 
Um, and so the my title is basically it it came up with this because of we wanted to make sure that we have uh, somewhere um, stored all the information. Uh, but it could be used for any type of other other files which you want to protect. For example, you have a script for uh, your new film and you don't want it to uh, be anyhow stolen. So you can use my title to save it there very securely. And in case it gets stolen some other way or somewhere, you can prove that uh, ownership by, uh, by, uh, by this technology. Um, does Tracy have any questions? Um, I was trying to see if anyone else uh, um, online that couldn't get in the meeting had a question. Hi, uh, I do have a question. I couldn't figure out how to add it to the Q&A chat, but I wanted to know what the sweet spot for pricing is when filmmakers um, uh, upload their film, what success what, I mean, how low is too low and how high is too high and what do you recommend? Yeah, we have a, when they are uploading or when you are a, as a filmmaker uploading the film, uh, we, when you go to the step where there is a price list, you can see the, you can see the recommended price list as the first one. And that one is around $150 uh, per screening. Um, in category two, which I think that US is in category one, so it would be 160 or something like that for screening up to 100 people. So it's like the in the middle, but it really depends on the film. If we have a new film which premiered a couple of weeks or months ago and uh, it's a, you know somehow famous film or something like that. They obviously go for a bigger, bigger price around two hundred dollars, or maybe even slightly more. But then it's getting too expensive, I would say. And we have like the lowest price is uh, around sixty, sixty dollars for screening, which could be used uh, for documentaries or for older films. But even older films, when you say older film, it could mean uh, different things because there are older films which are like classic and it could be national classic and so on. Uh, so in that case, it could be even higher the price because these are films which are, which are famous. People would love to uh, you know, see them, but it's very hard to obtain them somehow because if you don't understand the film industry, you don't know who to ask if I want to make a screening, who should I ask, you know, where should I get the film legally, uh, who should I pay for and so on. So you can get it through us. And of course, in this case, it could be, it could be even higher the price. But it's uh, also, you can, we can test out the, the prices. It could be like that uh, we set it for some price and we already did it with some Czech films and so on that we set the price and then we saw that the film is really not selling and we had a feedback that it's, that some people might be interested, but it's too expensive. So we talked to the producer and told him that and he downsized uh, the price and it oh. helped. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, since it's new, uh, we are trying to test out everything and see, see how the reactions are and so on. And then piggybacking off of that, if a filmmaker wanted to um, list an older title for free on your service, is that possible? Uh, whoa. Well, I'm not sure if it's technically there, the option, but um, I think we did it like especially for some kind of title because of there was some kind of anniversary or something and we had a document or something like that so we can technically do it we don't offer it in the basic uh, basic uh, option when you are uploading the film but if you contact us and want to do it uh, then we can uh, we can agree on that and we we have to edit especially from our administration system uh, but we don't offer it in within the upload system itself but it's possible, it's possible, because even we were thinking, you know, when there was uh, the, uh, I don't know, that there are some kind of things which are happening around the world, and we want to, you know, 
get people to know know about it or to talk about the topic it could be human rights and so on so yeah. uh, this is exactly the the point where we would like to offer them the film for for free just to get it seen nice hmm. Awesome. That is the only question I had other than um, because we're the Valley Film Festival and we always like to end on a positive note. However, I'm going to pause and see if anyone else has a question. Now is your time to pop it into the Q&A. Um, and while they're doing that, I'm going to ask you, Sophie, what has been the silver lining for 2020 for you? I know it's sometimes hard to find the good in the bad but we are vff so we are always positive <laughs> well the silver lining uh well it was actually a really nice summer which we had even though we couldn't imagine that at the spring that it will happen this way and it was really beautiful to see how many people uh, goes out and how you appreciate you know that you can be with your family and friends in person even though it's a smaller group and you somehow appreciate these moments much much better much more than than usually so this is one thing I think that the pandemic showed us uh, that we should appreciate uh, much uh, much more these types of moments so uh, I would say that this was uh, during the summer for me this was uh, this was very important and very nice to see what and everything what is happening specifically in culture because I work in culture for like 10 years and, and it's, it's something I'm really into. So it was really nice to see how, uh, how many people are trying to help each other even though there is no, not much work and jobs available and so on that there are still a lot of things happening. So, yeah. I guess you're- How about you? <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, just in interrupting Rebecca, um, you, you're a perk of um, the situation that we're all in right now because um, our fearless leader, Tracy, has been um, just uh, getting us involved in any community. We, uh, we um, got to meet you at the March 2 Films. We got to go to China this year. Um, wow. So, yeah, I'm just uh, glad we're all still here. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Um, I think that's it for the questions. I don't see anyone else asking any, but yeah, this year was great because we met you at the Marche, we went to Film Art. Um, so I love that uh, this year has made the global community, uh, filmmaking community much smaller and accessible so that we could do all of this. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, I don't see. And I like your energy, you know, guys. Every time I talk to you, it's it's really Aww. you have a this kind of like positive vibe, which is which is very nice too. To we see. try. <laughs> we have to have fun. Um, all right. So I don't see any more questions or any more comments in the chat. I think but that's if, it. If you can, uh, maybe you can even share my contact info or something if anyone wants to get in touch and talk later maybe or have some other questions, I will be definitely happy to answer those even later. Absolutely. We will message everyone who signed up for the panel um, with your contact information and more info about Artini. So Great. I um, want to thank Becca for taking this Q&A on um, and Sophie for always just being so welcoming to us whenever we have a question. We really appreciate it. Um, and we hope to get our filmmakers involved with Artini and help you grow and help them supplement their income. Yeah, that would be definitely great. Thank you so much, both of you and everyone who was listening. I will be, I will be definitely happy to stay in touch.